What's up, guys? This is Brave, and I'm back for another review of Love It Hip Hop Miami. This is season five, episode six, and the episode is titled Red Flags. So, we actually start this episode off with Shay and her mom. So, it is a great to see that these two women can now get along because you guys remember last season, her and her mom had some issues. And honestly, they had to bring in, what's her name? Iyala. And I thought, I'm like, I don't know if this is going to work. It seems like, you know, maybe once the baby gets here, it might be better. And that's what happened. Once uh, Shay became a mom, their relationship got better, which is great for them. And now we find out that Shay actually gave her dog to her mom. So that way, you know, she could spend a year with the baby or whatever, and then she would get her dog back. However, Shajaya is, is turning one, okay? We're planning a whole birthday party, and it's time for you to get your dog back, sis. Now, according to, what's her name, Shay, you know, Fabo doesn't even like the dog. And I'm just like, okay, but at the end of the day, that's still your dog, and it's your responsibility, not your mom's. Please chill out. So they talk about Fabo, actually. They talk about the relationship and how she's given him this basically ultimatum of you have 365 days to propose to me or this relationship is over. And here's the thing, Shay. I need for you to let that dream go. This man is not about to propose to you. He's not really your man. He's just your baby daddy. Um, Yeah. Why are you trying to hold on to this situation? Because that seems like that's what this was and what has always been. Because if you've been on and off with this man for 10 years and your family don't know nothing about him really, that must not have been your man. <laughs> like, her mom has no real idea of who Fabo is. We remember last season when she even said that she was pregnant. And, you know, her mom was just like, who's the daddy? Because nobody knew. Like, usually you will bring your partner around, especially if he's been around for 10 years. Come on now. But nonetheless, they talk about how, you know, her relationship is with Fabo, and her mom only sees red flags, and I agree with the mom. I see all the red flags when it comes to Fabo and nothing else. So her mom is telling her, like, listen, you can't force anyone to marry you. You can't force someone to want to be with you. And I absolutely agree like, you cannot force this man to want to marry you. Because here's the, here's the worst part about it. Let's say that you guys do get married. And then he starts treating you worse than what he already treats you like. Girl, then you're going to regret even getting married to the man. So, girl, move on, please. Y'all have, you know, a child together. But I feel like that is where it is. It starts and that's where it is. So, let's go ahead and move on to Ray J and Trick Daddy. For some reason, Love and Hip Hop Miami is trying to make these two a duo, and I'm not really here for it. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not really here for it. So, Ray J is telling Trick about how him and Prinky, they're back together, or whatever, they've moved down to Miami, and all these things are supposed to be good now, right? I said, how convenient. So, Trick goes on to talk about how you know, Bobby Lights was being messy, telling me about Joy and Marley. I said, now, hold up. Why are you mad at Bobby when Bobby was just giving you the information so that way your dumb ass ain't blindsided? Because let's be honest, had nobody said anything to Trick and he found out that everybody was around when Marley was giving Joy these flowers, you know he would have been pissed off. Like, Trina, why you ain't tell me? You know what I'm saying? Joy, you supposed to be my wife. I don't want to be, what did he say? Husband-in-law with him or whatever. You know how Trick be talking. You know what I'm saying? But you mad at Bobby. It's like, yeah, but without Bobby, you wouldn't even have this information. Shut up, Trick. So, they go on to talk about how Marlon gave Joy flowers. And the problem is that him and Marlon are supposed to be cool. So, according to Trick, he said if Marlon keep playing with him, He's going to, you know, mess around with Flo. I said, but does Flo want to mess around with you? Okay? Please stop. Now, Ray J even has his own story about Flo. Because 
when they were shooting like a music video, I guess they did like a song together. He said like things were getting weird because she was definitely trying to see if Ray J would possibly, you know, hook up with her because she was mad at Marlon at the time. And we already know Ray J is known for doing all types of crazy things. But listen, at that point, he was trying to be on a straight and narrow with Preaky. Now, if you caught him on a bad day when they had a fallout, you may have had a chance, girl. Nonetheless, um, Ray J tells <laughs> Trig Daddy that he needs to pull up on Marlon. I said, but for what, though? Like, what is Trick Daddy going to do? First of all, Trick Daddy's next number is what? 50? 60? Somewhere up there? Trick Daddy is too old to be pulling up on anybody, sir. Like, why are we doing this? Nonetheless, you have Ray J putting the battery in Trick's back, you know, to get the mess started. So Trick says he's going to have a conversation with Marlon because, you know, we all know that he does not want to let go of Joy, unfortunately. Even though sometimes I think that Joy likes to be called Trick Daddy Wife. I'm just going to throw that out there. He goes, girl, how are y'all still getting a divorce? That sounds crazy. But let's go ahead and move on, you guys. So we got to go through this with Amara La Negra. I'm sorry, y'all. I just don't see it for Amara. She's just not that girl for me. She's not. But she's over here filming some type of, like, Instagram ad for, like, a foot doctor. It was hella weird, okay? Because I'm like, what the hell does foot surgery have to do with Amara La Negra? Not a damn thing. Now, according to Amara La Negra, her uh, promos and ads and stuff that she runs, they have declined, right? Now, she wants to blame this on her relationship with Safari. And I'm like, girl, no, it's that you're not interesting. Like, no offense, but you have been on Love & Hip Hop for five seasons, okay? You started off as a singer. You ain't put out no records that have, you know, done anything. And now you're just an Instagram girl who happens to be on Love & Hip Hop. You don't really have a career. There's new influencers popping up every damn day. So, yeah, you're not interesting anymore. I can absolutely see why you're not getting deals and you're out here promoting foot surgeries, okay? So, again, she's over here trying to blame this on Safari. Y'all, we're going to move past that. Ray J, he sits down with Prinky, and I was over this whole conversation because nothing happened in this scene besides Ray telling her about the Trick Daddy and Marlon drama, and she feels like he's way too invested. I agree, but it's because Ray J ain't got shit else to do with his time. Matter of fact, you and Ray J ain't got shit to do with y'all time. But we're going to go ahead and move on. Y'all, we finally see Suki. I fucking forgot that Sukiana was even on the show. But baby, we see her. She is meditating. I said, oh, she was really trying to sell us this idea that she is just doing a whole 180 with her image, okay? Even though we see what she's doing right now, and it's not exactly the same as what she's trying to portray on the show. But we're going to go ahead and rock out. So, she feels a way. Oh, I forgot to mention, she's there with her sister. Her sister's very pretty. Um, she feels a way about Bobby. And she thinks that he's just this messy gossiper. And according to her, she's trying to elevate. And there's a time and a place for everything. I said, Suki, I just... <sighs> I need for you to get the right people in your corner that knows how to navigate a person transitioning their image because you say one thing, do another, and then everything gets blurred. Like everything, no offense, but it's getting murky because you say one thing that you're trying to elevate, change your image. However, we see you now, nothing has changed. So was you, so are you just trying to say that for the show? Or were you really trying to change your image? So, she feels like, you know, Bobby is a bully because he brought up her doing OnlyFans. Keep in mind, Bobby does OnlyFans his damn self. And she's like, you know, he was a bully because during the pandemic, I did an OnlyFans and I had to feed my kids, all this stuff. And I was like, I get it. I get it. A lot of people did OnlyFans during the pandemic. But Suki... 
don't think he was a bully. I think he was just trying to say, like, girl, you ratchet just like I ratchet. Girl, we doing the same thing. Where are you coming from with this whole new image thing? And I get it. A lot of people don't really understand transitions. But then a lot of people also know how to call you on your bullshit when they know that you a bullshitter. I think this, that Bobby thinks that Suki is bullshitting. You not really trying to change your image. Like, stop playing. So, nonetheless, we got to talk about Mama D. Now, y'all, I did not follow the Mama D and Suki drama, but this got real messy. So, Mama D's doing an interview. They ask her, like, oh, which cast member doesn't put out music or doesn't put out good music? Something along those lines. And she clearly did not know Suki's name. She literally said, you know, the dark girl, the dark-skinned girl who kind of fat. And I was like, oh, okay, first of all, Mama D, she's not fat. But y'all may judge me for saying this. Here's the thing. Suki does have a rounder face. And I kind of feel like if Suki didn't have, like, surgeries, she would be a little thicker. Like, I just feel that way. I feel like she would be a lot thicker than what she is. Even though she's a very petite woman, all I'm saying is I think that she would be thicker than what she is had she not had surgeries now mama d you fell for the bait they do this a lot okay interviewers always especially these fucking podcasts who have no type of journalism in a background at all they decide that we're going to see which person is going to take the bait and mama d took the bait of throwing somebody under the bus right all right you got to live with that mama d so in the interview, you know, she basically said whatever she said, right? Then, I guess Suki got wind of it. They're going back and forth online. Now, Suki says that Mama D is trying to get clout off of her. And I don't really think that she was trying to get clout off of you. I think Mama D was just answering the question. I really do. And then we see her talk about Shay. And how Shay has invited her to her daughter's birthday party. Now keep in mind, she didn't even like Shay. Okay? She said she didn't like Shay at first, but now she loves her because she saw who Shay was, you know, as a person when they did the family reunion. I said, okay, fine. New friendships blossoming. I would rather see Shay and what's her name? I would rather see Shay and Sukiyana versus Shay and Amara Lanegra because I am absolutely tired of seeing her. Like, seriously. Amara ain't her friend. So I don't even know why we try to play it. We definitely gonna get to why I say Amara is not her friend once we get to that party. So, she said she gonna check Mama D if she at that party. I said, "Uh uh-oh, here we go. So, then we have Trick Daddy and Ray J. They rolling around in the city because they about to pull up on Marlon. Now, they get there. Snoop is there. Come to find out Snoop's wife is somehow related to Florence or related to Marlon, some type of way, you know? So as they're talking, they low-key try to throw Bobby under the bus, like always. And then we have Trick going on about how, you know, this is an uncomfortable situation and all of this. And I'm just like, is it though? Because I don't really see that. (laughs) And then Marlon, he's scared of Trick Daddy. So he basically tries to be like, oh, you know, I was just giving her flowers because she's a beautiful woman. So now you're going to downplay your feelings for joy. Uh, Please stop. Please stop. Now, here's the thing. Trick Daddy does not feel like Marlon is good enough for joy. And I agree. Because even Trick Daddy was like, this man slept with his his wife's sister, her homegirl. He got a kid out there. He he doing way too much. He doing way more than I even do. And I said, oh, that's sad. That's sad when you out here doing more than Trick Daddy. That's just terrible. So, we jump back over to Amara. She's feeling away about Safari. Because he's on the internet saying how, you know, there was one woman who got away. The reference was absolutely Nicki Minaj. And hell, let's be for real. Nicki is the one that got away. Do you see where Nicki's career is? Do you see where Nicki is in, the in like, her life right now? If Safari could mooch off of her a little bit longer, he absolutely wish he could have. Like, let's be for real. So, 
after that, um, oh, she decides to tell Safari about how, you know, she's losing business deals because of him and all of that. Ma'am, that has nothing to do with Safari. You're losing business deals because you are no longer interesting. Stop blaming that man for that. Please. See, this whole fake storyline, it ain't working for me. I need to get Amara and Safari off my screen ASAP. We gonna move on. So, we get to Shay's daughter's birthday party. Fabo is nowhere to be found. And honestly, y'all, here goes another one of these fancy-ass birthday parties that have nothing to do with this child. Where are the children's activities? Like, this is honestly looking... I mean, it looks better than Amara's daughter's birthday party, but it, this is like a competition with these two. And I really feel like that's the problem with Shay and Amara. They're low-key in competition with each other, and it don't make no damn sense. Nonetheless, Mama D shows up, or whatever, and her and Shay talk about how Mama D has been distant because she really wanted Shay to be with Scrappy. But Mama D says at this point, you know, I did want that in the past, but, you know, it's clearly not going to work out between y'all two. I just want to see both of y'all happy. I said, okay, fine. Clearly, Mama D is coming in very level-headed, right? That's short-lived, but we'll get there. Suki shows up. So, her and Mama D, they go to the bar, have a conversation. Now, in the beginning, Mama D was trying to be accountable, right? About what she said. And then she goes on to say that, yes, she said those things about Suki, but she wants Suki to see how, you know, the whole Suki with the good coochie is portraying a black woman. So now, Suki wants to bring up the fact that, well, girl, you used to be a pimp. Uh, Y'all, okay. Y'all may not like this comment that I'm going to say, but it is what it is. I don't feel like Mama D was trying to come from a bad place. I think in this moment, Mama D has saw, you know, after getting into it with Suki, I think that she has seen the type of person that Suki is, for sure. But I think that her point is, you're coming out as an artist, and your name is Suki with the good coochie. Like, what else do you have to show for yourself? Like, you are more than just a body part. And even though Mama D used to be a pimp, like, that was her past. That was in what? The 80s or whatever. I think at this point, she does want the women to do better than what she did. At least that's what I would hope. Like, I think that's where she was coming from. Like, girl, I already been through this type of shit. You don't have to go down this path. But no offense, the younger generation, they want to make their own mistakes. They want to do their own things. They don't want to listen to older people. Even though an older person can be right. Because honestly... I like the name Sukiyana, but this whole Suki with the good cooch girl, I can't announce that at a damn award show. Suki with the good blank, like what are we doing? Nonetheless, you have Mama D walking away, but then she threw some condoms out. This became a whole fucking mess at a one year old's birthday party, and I'm just like, what is happening? They doing all this yelling and screaming. I'm just like. Shay, why did you invite both of them? Somebody shouldn't have got invited. And technically, since you are closer to uh, Mama D, maybe you shouldn't have invited Suki, and y'all could have just went to lunch or something. So that way y'all can get a scene together. Because this is a hot mess. So, now we see on the other side, once they done doing whatever they doing, um, we actually see MJ and the mom have a conversation about how wrong it is that Fabo is not there. Like, sir, where are you at? It's been hours into the party. You are nowhere to be found, right? And they actually felt like he did it on purpose. Now, Fabo finally shows up and he hops on the mic. He apologizes for being late and then he has Shay go outside as if this is my super sweet 16 and he done got her a goddamn Tesla. I'm like, is this... My super sweet 16, like, when they used to get the kids a, a brand new car, what the hell is happening? So, according to him, this is her push gift, and I'm just kind of like, a year later, sir, really? 
what is going on? Something is iffy about him and that car. It's probably somebody else's car. Who knows? But nonetheless, she's excited about it. And I'm just like, girl, if that's what makes you happy, okay? I guess. Now, Mama D, I guess since she done already acted a fool with Suki, she feels like she can act a fool with everybody. So she goes to talk to Fabo, and she basically tells this man, like, yeah, when Shay was pregnant, I wish she was by my son. Mama D, go somewhere with that, please. The child is one year old. It ain't your grandchild for real. Go sit your ass down somewhere and go get a plate of food. Go fi- figure out if the meatballs is good or not. Please get away from this man, okay? We're trying to bring drama to his doorstep. That has nothing to do with him. This is all your feelings. Now, y'all, this is what I really said. Oh, Amara and Shay are not friends. Amara finally shows up, y'all. And based on the twins' outfits and the way her and her mama sashayed up in there carrying them twins, I said, oh, Amara wanted to be seen. Amara wanted to make an entrance. And she absolutely wanted to upstage Shay at her own goddamn baby's party. That is a mess. Like, these two girls are not friends at all. It, it is clear. So, last thing, y'all. Shay's mom, she has to confront Fabo about being number one three hours late to the party and tells him that it's time for them to take their dog back. Now, he feels like it's time for the baby and the dog need to go ahead and move on to the side. And he told her, like, listen, F that dog. And I'm just like, whoa, like, (laughs) you clearly don't like dogs, sir. Okay. Um, Now, after he said all this, he stormed off. MJ walks up because he heard what he said to his mom. So now you have MJ and Fabo going back and forth because MJ's talking about he's going to drop the dog off at their house and it's not the mom's responsibility to care for the dog, which it's not. And... Fabo tells him to take that dog to a shelter. The mom is trying to explain, like, this is an expensive dog. Like, why would you take it to the shelter? All this stuff. Man, Fabo is up walking away. You have MJ um, getting so mad that he knocking shit on the floor. And honestly, I feel like all of this was a hot-ass mess. You wasted money throwing a one-year-old's birthday party where you could have just did some shit at the house. You could have just bought her a little cake put a little hat on her head, and you could have celebrated that way because these people have fucked all of this up between your, your man, or should I say your baby daddy, and your brother. You got Suki and Mama D. Like, it was just too much drama happening. But y'all, that was the episode. Let me know what y'all thought about it. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe to my channel, and I will talk to y'all in my next review. Bye, guys.